Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on knowing the alternate segment theorem. Now this is probably the hardest of all the circle theorems and students often find it hard to see when they can use it. But I'll try my best. Let's just say you have a circle and we have a tangent to the circle. Remember tangent is just a straight line that touches the circle. And let's say at that point of contact to the circle of the tangent we have a chord. So we've got this chord here. So we have an angle between this chord and the tangent. Now remember that a segment is just the area between the chord and the circumference of the circle. So this whole area here is known as a segment of the circle. This would also be the segment here, but we want the segment on the other side of the chord to the tangent. So tangent, chord, segment. And basically what the alternate segment theorem says is that this angle between the chord and tangent is the same as the angle in the segment. Now what I mean by the angle in the segment is that if we take two points at the end of the chord and we fire into the circle from those points so that we meet at the circumference, that angle where we meet is the same as that angle between the chord and the tangent. So this is known as the alternate segment theorem. So just a very quick example and then we go on to these. If I have a tangent like this and a chord, and let's just say that that was equal to 40 degrees, then if I fire from the two ends of this chord into the circle, like to here say, then that angle there would also be 40 degrees. Let's apply it to these examples here. There might be some angles in the diagram we don't actually need to use, but let's look for a tangent and a chord. Well, this is a tangent, the line touching the circle, and at that point where the the line meets the circle, we've got this chord here. So we have this angle x between the chord and the tangent. And remember, we just put our fingers on the end of the chord and we fire using the lines in the diagram until our fingers meet at the circumference of the circle. Now where they meet, we can see that angle is 30. So that means x must also be 30 degrees. And this 100 we're not actually going to use. What about this one? This is a bit harder. Well, let's firstly identify the tangent and the chord. That's our first step. Well, we know this angle between this tangent and this chord of the circle. It's 50 degrees. So what we do is we fire from the two ends of the chord. We follow the lines until our fingers meet at the circumference of the circle. So that angle where they meet, that they meet at that angle there, not that whole angle, just the angle between our two fingers there. That angle must be equal to that 50 degrees. So let's put that there. And then we want to try and find y. Well, notice we know two of the angles in this triangle. And angles in a triangle add up to 180. So if we subtract 60 and 50 from 180, we get 70 degrees. And then, can you see, look, we've got a quadrilateral here where all four points of that quadrilateral are on the circumference of the circle. It's on the circle, on the circle, on the circle, on the circle. And do you remember that opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add to 180 degrees. So therefore y is 180 minus 70, and y is therefore equal to 110 degrees. So that's a bit of a harder question there, mixing a bunch of different circle theorems.